Okay, so um, hi everyone. My name is Colin Davis. Hi everyone, welcome, and I'm Melissa Mari. And this is a um, an introductory class to our four week course, which is going to be starting on February 11th, and uh, continue on every Saturday for four weeks thereafter. And um, this is a this this. Well, this, this is an introduction where we're going to share with you some of the material that we're going to be sharing with you in the four-week class. It's all based on our book, Shadow Tech. And, um, and you're also free to go download the book for free or buy a Kindle or a, a hard copy of that if you want. Just go to shadowtechbook.com. And uh, at the end of this uh, talk, we're going to give you all the links and everything you need to register for the class and all that you'll need at the end. So um, before we get fo go forward with a, the with a PowerPoint and this presentation, did you want to say anything, Melissa? Well, I just wanted to, to uh, tell everyone that this is just a sliver mm -hmm. of, of our work and our investigation into the shadow. Um, because it's such a big, a big area mm -hmm. and there's so much in the book and it's an ongoing investigation that what we're going to be sharing today is just a piece of yeah. it. This it's whole, a sizable piece. But it's it really, a sizable piece, but yeah. this realm is so vast and it's a, it's mythological. And so it's very, it's, it's a very difficult subject for a lot of people mm -hmm. because there's so much mythology about darkness and evil. And what we're trying to do is demystify it and actually uh, develop some sort of science regarding darkness itself. Yeah. Yeah. This is, um, yeah, anytime you start to go look at something dark, whether it's culture, whether it's in yourself, in your family, uh, in nature, um, it it resonates with some part of yourself that is, um, it you know, shadow in the culture touches shadow in the mind. And the thing about shadow is that it, by definition, it is unassimilated or unmetabolized uh, information or energy in the psyche. And so... Mm -hmm. Uh, anytime you come to terms with something that you have not um, previously come to terms with, it causes disturbances. And so anytime you're working with a shadow, it's disturbing. And uh, when you, I think after you have worked with your own shadow material for some time, you, st you start to take it for granted that as you work with this um, material, it will be uh, challenging and you come to accept that challenge and you come to understand that that challenge uh, always leads to growth in yourself. Right. Exactly. And so that's really what gets you over the hump. That's what gets you, um, keeps you motivated to work on shadow material or to accept and to work on shadow material in the culture, because really this is a big part of it. Um, and so that's, yeah, that, that should be said right up front. Yeah. Yeah, so right now um, we're going to be pretty basic, but in the future when we're doing this class, it could trigger some shadow material in you, yeah. which to us, that's a really good thing yeah. because that's an opportunity to actually evolve yourself. That's yeah. number one. Yeah, anytime something comes up that's disturbing, that's triggering, and we'll get into this in a little bit, that's a potential doorway into your own shadow material, which so that you can start to clear this material. So things that make you uncomfortable um, are, are potential, um, uh, they, they, they could be the impetus for your own growth. Exactly. So um, I think Melissa is gonna be reading most of the slides and then we'll, I'll give, we'll both give some comment on those. So the purpose of this class is to give you effective maps and tools for navigating and transmuting your own psychic shadow content and for understanding shadow dynamics in relationships and culture. Mm -hmm. 
also to enlarge our understanding of the mind and its inherent destructive mechanisms through a novel 21st century map mm -hmm. <laughs> to facilitate the individuation process following the archetypal pattern of evolution in nature known as alchemy. And then at the bottom it says, today, the shadow and psychic parasitism, which is, um, I, I wish I could find a less um, mythological or science fiction-ish sounding term to describe this, but that's <laughs> the most accurate term. So again, um, because, so we're, we're going to now take you through a definition of the shadow, try to get you acquainted with what Jungian idea of the shadow is, and then we're going to take you uh, into a subset of this domain, an active aspect of the shadow, where, um, um, where um, complexes in the psyche become um, autonomous and parasitic. And you would think that that might be some kind of a, a pathology that um, only a few people would have, but we're all harboring these kinds of, um, of materials. And I do want to um, ask anyone that is unmuted to mute themselves by using star six on the phone um, by go or by going to the lower left-hand corner of your, of your um, interface there and hitting mute. So, um, so alchemy, and this is something, again, we'll be talking more about in the class, uh, but um, People that get familiar with Carl Jung's work or with Jungian um, concepts um, eventually uh, find that um, Jung's work is really um, alchemy and it's alchemy explained in 20th century language. And um, I, I, the more I started to look at alchemy and then the more I started to um, understand Jungian concepts, the more I realized how that, um, well, that what Carl Jung was doing and what his individuation process is, is um, spiritual alchemy, esoteric alchemy, I mean, to the core. I mean, that's really what Jung is. People say he's a shaman. Um, and the shaman archetype, the alchemist archetype, really, they're the same fundamental thing. And uh, he's an alchemist. And, and so... The, that picture you're seeing on the screen is an, is, a, is an old piece of art related to alchemy and related to the Negrito stage of alchemy. And so there's so many different ways to describe alchemy. Um, and, and one way to think of alchemy is it's a Western yoga. Uh, it's an easy way to understand what, um, what esoteric or internal alchemy is. And, and, in, and the way alchemy has been described in three stages, because it can be described in many other stages, but is as the negrito, the albedo, and the rubedo. So it's <clears> the blackening, <throat> the whitening, and the reddening. And the blackening stage is the first stage of any transmutation in yourself, in nature, um, in any developing system. There has to be a breaking apart, a decomposition, a putrefactio, a mortifactio. There has to be a, a process of breaking down what was and then a separation and then a further refining. And so this is what spiritual alchemy is. It's, it's a refining of your psyche, of your shadow, of your psychic contents in general, and then a breaking apart and um, and um, and through that process, that's how we grow. That's how we evolve, like any life does. Right. Um, so alchemy is the evolutionary process of the universe. Of evolution in the universe. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, it, it starts in nature, from the soil to the seed, uh, the growth. Of the plant, right. Of the plant. Flowering. It's in uh, It's in physics. Yep. Uh, and you will find. Cosmology. It, yeah, cosmology. Alchemy is the universal science. And so that's, that's a really important thing to understand and to contemplate how your life is is an alchemical process whether you're aware of it or not yeah. you are 
in an alchemical process. Yeah. And this whole process, we go through maybe not once, twice, but over and over again in our life. We're constantly refining ourselves, yeah. going up the spiral. You don't actually go through a Negrito and then an Albedo and then a Rubedo and then you are the individuated king or queen. It's not just a simple one, two, three step process. It, we're spiraling and different parts of our, of our psyche are moving and while dragging up other parts and it's a back and a forth and a spiraling. And you might go through a large Negrito process, what's called the dark night of the soul at some point in life. And you might do a lot of shadow work at that point, but you'll be doing shadow work for the rest of your life. Exactly. Okay. So uh, moving on. Maybe, yeah, I mean, you can just give a little bit of background for folks um, as to how we got into this because we're artists, musicians, and um, we didn't get into this through, through uh, uh, an academic, uh, uh, inlet there yeah so um we both have had experiences in our life um that have shown us that this was the time that we were going um for myself uh i come from a somewhat traumatic background with mental illness in my family and leaving home at a very young age um, and then I had cancer, and so that really started me on the whole healing process, and I realized that I would actually have to go into my code, into my DNA itself, to fully heal myself, and I also um, had to go into the dark uh, cultural realm yeah. and I had to see how the medical system was really about making money off of people and not really about healing and that cancer cures had been around for many years so it kind of put me into wow what I've been being told in my world mm -hmm. is not real yeah you had to go down the rabbit hole you had exactly. to take the red pill right as it were. right yeah. so that started me into the cultural virus mm -hmm. um but then when colin and i started taking walks together um we made we made a commitment um to each other that there were areas in our life that that were keeping us from our full potential mm -hmm. And that we had to fully commit to a process of going into the darkest part of our psyche. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can. Well, yeah. I mean, and, and that's because we had known each other for quite a few years before. But when this phase started about four years ago, and it did uh, occur through going um, through, through walks. And it was, um, it, I mean... It's, it's, it's been an interesting process. I mean, we, we, we figured out that we were doing alchemy a couple of years into it. Right. Because, um, and, and realizing that it really is a, a artistic science. Right. It is an objective and subjective exploration of yourself in the world. And this is kind of what we were naturally doing. We were going into our own subjective space and then, um, forming objective realizations or concepts or practices out of that. Right. We had a lot of synchronicities um, that occurred, which led us to um, other writers and information, yeah. which showed us that we were on the right track. And we kept going right. deeper and deeper and deeper right. into this, uh, which led to the writing of this book. Yeah, it really was. Um, it, there, we could tell you about some experiences, some um, psycho-spiritual experiences that we had during the beginning of this phase that was, that was quite, um, they were quite um, pointed and they, they really showed us, you know, we're on, we're on to something here. And, um, and, it, and so at some point we had like thousands of hours of recorded conversations and notebooks full and we started to see these reoccurring concepts and 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 um 
um, understandings. And some point we're like, okay, well, we have to write this down. We have to get these into some kind of, a, of an order. And then that's what caused us to start by writing. Right. This book. So this is an organic process. Yeah, it's totally and artistic is, and organic. Yeah. This is what we're sharing with people is that everyone who's on this call mm -hmm. has their own particular process, their own particular uh, what we call life art to share with themselves, their relationships, their community, and their world. Mm -hmm. And this particular area, the shadow, is something that everyone who is on the path mm -hmm. of healing or or uh, individuating yourself mm -hmm. has to go through this process. Yes, yeah, you do. Yeah. And, 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 and probably most people that start on, on taking this very seriously are folks that fall down some kind of rabbit hole. You have some kind of an occurrence, some kind of a dark night that wakes you up and makes you realize, wow, I've been kind of just going along on a program and not really understanding what's behind the program. How could I have fallen into this situation? And then that's what causes you to start to say, there's something much deeper. There's a much deeper storyline going here on here. And let's start to uncover that right. and do this excavation work because that's another way to look at this work right. individuation work is excavation work it's right. digging up old bones and dusting them off and going what is this right okay so um okay now this could get complicated and so because we just have a a, a short talk here today we're just going to very briefly go into this and we'll go into this more in the in the series but one of the things that that at least for me, I, I am never really comfortable trying to investigate some domain that I don't feel that I have a strong rooting in uh, or footing in its fundamentals. And I actually have some background in law and legal research. And that was one of the things that, that I had to do in, in that part of my life was is to come into an understanding of the most fundamental um, precepts of our legal system and where it came from. And so I had to do the same thing here. And so when I'm saying to myself, okay, well, I want to understand my own shadow and I want to understand the shadow in the culture. I want to understand destructive processes in myself. Um, well, I want to understand what is the role of destruction itself in the cosmos. So I want to trace this back as far as I can. And so, um, um, to keep it short for now, I won't explain how we came up with this model that you're looking at there. But if you could take the Taoist yin yang symbol, which I'm sure everyone here is familiar with, which where the yang side, the light side represents creativity and masculine outward moving um, um, tendencies and the passive side or the, the, the yin side, the black one um, relates to feminine inward moving potentials and also to destruction, which is a very interesting thing there. But if you can imagine that one side of the yin yang symbol is the masculine and feminine attributes of creation, and then flip it over and see the masculine and feminine aspects of destruction or the passive and active aspects of destruction. And um, in trying to map that out, the way, the way this came out was that you could see the passive side of destruction in the cosmos as this force that scientists call entropy. It is that continual pulling on order that is um, introducing chaos into everything that is ordered. And it's like a gravitational pull and it goes through everything in the universe. And every science has an understanding of how entropy gets involved in that particular um, system that they're studying. Okay, so that makes sense. But what about the active side of destruction in the universe? And this is quite tricky, but if you can see that the way that the active principle of destruction works is through what we call destructive agency or subjective destructive agency. In other words, everything every creature, every organism, every human being that is creating 
um, order and life for itself, what's creating good for itself. I start a new business, I start a new family, I start a new art project. Every time something or someone starts something new and creative, they at the same time destroy someone else or something else objectively outside of their own sphere. Or there's a, there's a death of, of the old so that the new can be born. And you're right. That's another way to say it is that even in your own sphere of creation, when you start to create something, it does require that even in your own sphere, you experience the death of what was there before. Right. So by getting involved in anything creative from your own particular point of view, you are destroying not only what you were, but you are destroying other systems in the I might start a nice new coffee shop and everything is going great, but I'm making some other coffee shop go out of business down the street as a consequence. And this is being spread out all throughout the universe. Right. So this is, um, on one hand, this could be depressing because you realize that there is truth in the um, balance of the yin-yang symbol there, that the dark side is literally 50% of the equation but it could also be a freeing thing, right? Right. So what you really understand when you really contemplate that the yin-yang is half dark, half light, yeah. and you really understand how evil is subjective, mm -hmm. it gives you a much greater compassion and it frees up your your psyche yeah to really understand the cycles of creation and destruction yes. and it really allows you not to get afraid of death and things ending and these dark times yes. and you look at them as opportunities yes for something new to be born, for a new evolution. And yes. you can really see this in the culture right now. Yeah, absolutely. And the more we the more we start to look at our own darkness and come to terms with it, the easier it is to accept that evil or destruction will be, it will be in this lifetime, in this universe. And what can we do with that? How can we uh, learn from that? So now let's go, we wanted to give you that there because that's a, a, an overreaching, objective, zoomed out view of destruction in the universe. And now let's zoom down and let's go right into the destructive force in the human psyche, what, what Jungian psychologists call the shadow. And, and Melissa, we're gonna, we're gonna read you a few quotes here to just kind of get you acquainted with what the traditional definition of the shadow is. Okay, so the shadow is the unknown dark side of our personality. It tends to consist predominantly of the primitive, negative, socially or religiously deprecated human emotions and impulses like sexual lust, power striving, selfishness, greed, envy, anger, or rage, and due to its unenlightened nature, is completely obscured from consciousness. That's from Stephen Diamond. Yeah. The shadow is the sum of all personal and collective psychic elements, which because of their incompatibility with the chosen conscious attitude are denied expression mm -hmm. in life. Neil Yaffa, yes. So, um, those definitions, uh, I mean, we've been, we've been not only looking at some novel understandings of the shadow, but also the Jungian and traditional understanding of it. And the more I read Jung himself, the more I realize that his understanding of the shadow is, I think, 100% accurate. I, can't, I have not found anything where Jung talks about the shadow or its influence in the world that I thought was off base. The only thing I'm adding or we're trying to um, work on here is to develop um, another lens that you can stack on top of that and see things through. But so everybody's shadow content is different, uh, especially across uh, different cultures, because the shadow, shadow is basically, and I think that the, 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 um, the, the second definition there is, is really, is really accurate. If you can just see that 
shadow material of your mind or psyche is really any material which is unassimilated or unmetabolized into the ego. It hasn't found its way into your conscious view of yourself um, um, and it, you, it's, it's, it has a discordant relationship to your ego. So, um, we could also break the ego down into the conscious ego and then this other um, aspect of it that Jungians call the persona. And you could say that the persona and the shadow are equal opposite to each other. But um, it's common in the West um, because of our uh, cultural heritage that we, um, that we, you know, we're often told that when we're hurt or that things are um, damaging us internally, we're told that we need to get over it. And, um, but that never really happens. You never really get over anything. You um, retain that material. So this can be material that was passed to you intergenerationally. This is material that's, that's been in your culture for a long, long time. This is called material that occurred through um, specific or developmental trauma in your childhood. And, um, and these, these particular emotions and, and impulses like selfishness, greed, envy, anger, lust, rage, these are the typical contents of the shadow. But there's also a light side, isn't there? Right. So there is light material, your evolutionary material. Yeah is also can be in the shadow and what we found is that this repressed uh destructive energy is actually hiding your diamond yeah um, your genius your genius yeah. a lot of times that cannot get out cannot start to show itself to you because of this destructive um, shadow energy that's going on. Yeah, and, and I know in my own experience, I know that this is actually common, is, is that as you start to get more and more in touch with your unique genius, um, you, can, um, you can find that it is connected to shame. And it could also be connected to narcissism and uh, what you could call infantile grandiosity. Different people um, deal with their own uh, inner discordances differently. And some people who are insecure about their genius will um, blow themselves up, blow their ego out, balloon their ego out and become narcissistic. And then other people will self-deprecate and feel shame about their genius. And so whether it is the narcissism or whether it's the shame or grief or guilt, these are all shadow materials that have to be, you have to mine down into them, drill down into them and get access to them so that they can ventilate or move up and assimilate out into your normal waking uh, consciousness. Okay. So um, moving on. Um, so Melissa, how does the human being cope with shadow energies typically? So number one is through repression, denial, mm -hmm. and I would add also distraction. Mm -hmm. Number two, projection. Mm -hmm. And number three, displacement and self-destruction. Yeah, so repression is kind of just a, um, you could put all the, she said, repression, denial, distraction, they could all kind of go under repression. So we generally, um, repress shadow contents that we have not yet worked with. And uh, we, you know, the term cognitive dissonance, we just can't see something. Now something in the culture might show up that resonates with shadow material inside of ourselves, especially through, for example, we're going through political season in America and, you know, something about a politician might resonate discordantly with one's own shadow material. Um, but we have a cognitive dissonance um, around seeing that in ourselves. Whatever it is that's out there, we have a hard time seeing it ourselves. So we generally deny, repress, distract away from this material. And what I just described there a second ago was this other technique, this other trick that we play on ourselves called projection. And really projection is related to the way our perception works and there's nothing wrong with projection. It's part of the way our apparatus works, 
But one of the things that we do to protect our ego state from shadow material is that we project it onto other people, onto other events. We see someone else as the greedy one, as the lustful one, as the violent one. And, um, and we fail to see that we have those same tendencies in ourselves. And one of the things I wanted to mention that, that I didn't mention in the earlier slide is that a great deal of these shadow materials come from our animal nature, our animal right, heritage. Right. They come from life processes themselves because especially violence, because right. violence um, and, and sexual drives too, because these go all the way back millions right. and billions of years into life itself. We never, we never evolve out of having these deep animal natures no. in ourselves. No. And so the whole idea is to actually go in there, find them, mm -hmm. and then learn how to let them out in healthy ways. That's right. So one of the, so, so healthy ways are, you know, especially with like um, uh, violence, for example, for example, sports is one actually healthy way of displacing violent impulses, but also uh, pre-civilized people had very elaborate rituals for setting up basically mock wars and, and occurrences that allowed them to uh, displace their violence um, and other shadow energies in a healthy way and mitigate these, these, these energies. And that's, we, we don't have them yeah. very much. So what we end up doing is we end up displacing our internal entropy, our internal shadow material um, into the world through conflicts, through wars, um, through all kinds of misconduct and all kinds of things that end up hurting ourselves and hurting the culture. Right. So or you, we, yeah. or we, generate or we go inwards with it that's right. the other way it goes and we self-destruct we go into depressive right. modes or we develop disease yeah so you can really see that right now just in the last couple of days there's been some violent protests and that's a, is a is exactly what we're talking about that is displacement of their entropy that's right displacement of the shadow material that they haven't worked through in a healthy way so as a way to deepen, uh, let's see where we are with our time. How are we with time? About 11.30. Okay, we're good. And so to, to kind of, let's move now into, um, into how shadow material is not just um, personal material, but it's, it's collective psychic material and how Jung understood this. Right. So he wrote this about a hundred years ago, but it could have been written yeah. today. Yeah. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. So the gigantic catastrophes that threaten us today are not elemental happenings of a physical or biological order, but are psychic events. To a quite terrifying degree, we are threatened by wars and revolutions, which are nothing other than psychic epidemics. Mm -hmm. At any moment, several million human beings may be smitten with a new madness, and then we shall have another world war or devastating revolution. Right. Instead of being at the mercy of wild beasts, earthquakes, landslides, and inundations, modern man is battered by the elemental forces of his own psyche. Yeah, um, notice that he said that these are nothing other than psychic epidemics. And the more I mine some of Jung's um, words, the more I see, and this is common for anybody that studies Jung, is, is that that even individual words are very, very deep and very serious and very accurate. Um, so, and that's actually where we're going to go next is into seeing um, this, this psychic shadow material in terms of a biological, in a biological view as disease, as psychic disease. And, um, and so, and so this, this material is not just personal, but is collective and shared throughout the culture. Um, 
Here's one more quote from Jung, I think, and then we'll move to the, to the next segment. It is a frightening thought that man also has a shadow side to him, consisting not just of little weaknesses and foibles, but of a positively demonic dy dynamism. Mm -hmm. The individual seldom knows anything of this. To him, as an individual, it is incredible that he should ever in any circumstances go beyond himself and act unconsciously. Mm -hmm. But let these harmless creatures form a mass, and there emerges a raging monster, and each individual is only one tiny cell in the monster's body, so that for better or worse, he must accompany it on its bloody rampages and even assist it to the utmost. Yeah. Having a dark suspicion of these grim possibilities, man turns a blind eye to the shadow side of human nature. Yeah, and in the 20th century, um, uh, so Young was um, talking about a lot of this stuff after World War I, which was extremely bloody and irrational. And then we had World War II. And in fact, the 20th century uh, may have been the bloodiest um, century of all of mankind's history. And there's some good studies on this, but uh, I, I think an accurate accounting is, is that um, over 260 million people died through all kinds of um, genocides and revolutions and um, government policies in the Soviet Union and in China and in Europe, all over the world. And that number doesn't even include casualties of war. And so um, if you look at any of these of these giant human catastrophes like this, you see easily and when when you when you in hindsight you see how irrational they were and how that people were overtaken, taken over, um, literally possessed by um, ideological principles, and then um, would commit actions that totally went against their own values supposedly to enforce their values. So basically they've been possessed and they're completely unconscious. And we have that potential and we find it in our own relationships when we get into fights with each other. And the thing is, is because we have not made a science of the shadow. We have not really taken Jung's words seriously as a culture. We are still generally very impoverished about our own destructive nature and how it works in the psyche. And so what reason do we have to believe that we could never do these things again? Well, as you can see, <laughs> this is what's been going on. Right. So, um, all right. Um, so, that kind of answers this question right there, right? Why we need shadow awareness. Right. So obviously everyone is experiencing a certain amount of chaos and, um, and uh, being very uncomfortable at the direction that our planet is going in. And why is that? Uh, we are all collectively, we're all connected. Mm -hmm our collective unconscious we feel is creating this together. Mm -hmm. And so we, we need to, as individuals become strong individuated humans mm -hmm. in order to do our life's work. Yeah. Um, everyone has a particular part to play mm -hmm. in the evolution of our species. Mm -hmm. And, we all have to take responsibility of our own shadows. Our own contribution to the collective discordance of humanity. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, this is why we're sharing this information. Mm -hmm. This is why we're showing um, you what we have done and what's come to us as far as doing shadow work and how important it is because what you find when you start doing this and you go into your your own psyche and you start clearing out these energies and moving this uh, you find that your consciousness and your own personal evolution 
occurs naturally. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You get more space in your psyche. Absolutely. Things just start to happen in your external world, oh, yeah. which relate to how your inner state is. Right. Exactly. It really is a natural process. Yeah. And the hardest part is actually making the commitment mm -hmm. to go into those areas that you are most uncomfortable about. Yeah, absolutely. And when you do that, it turns on this individuation process, exactly. this alchemical process and yourself and your psyche guides you, your conscious ego through the process. All right. So now what we're going to do, and we're going to probably kind of skip a little bit faster than we probably um, had thought, but this is going to be explained much more deeply in the class. It's all in our book as well. And we're going to now talk to you about how this shadow energy that we've been talking about organizes in complexes and how this shadow energy um, can collectivize in the psyche and become autonomous and parasitic to your own state um, and how then these parasitic uh, complexes can collectivize uh, through the culture. Now, again, in order to be able to understand this, and in order to be able to understand any processes in the shadow, we have to ask ourselves, well, we're talking about the shadow, and the shadow is a subset of what? Of the psyche. And what is the psyche? <laughs> Who has an answer for that, right? So the psyche and the mind, these are terms that are synonymous. And when you start to go look and see if the... Um, if there is an established understanding of the mind, well, there isn't. And it's pretty amazing when you start to find out that that's not the case. So in our own case, um, we had to um, define the mind or the psyche in a, in a way that really worked for us that we could use. So we're gonna um, go through um, a list. I think I'm just gonna read this real quick, a list of, um, of different concepts which are all true about the mind and the shadow we believe now dan siegel dr dan siegel has uh, uh i think is really on target with this and he says that the mind is an embodied and relational process so the mind is um like it says there energetic and informational it is an ecosystem and an operating system and it's a semiotic domain meaning wherever energy moves potential information is created now we use the term biocomputer here because that's john c Lilly's term and it's very helpful actually um, to look at the human being similarly to the way a computer is the difference is is that a computer is not organic it is not alive it is not a living evolving system but a computer like the human being has a physical side, a physical infrastructure, the monitor and the hard drive and all the peripherals. And then it has an informational side, an energetic informational side we call the operating system or the software. Well, the human being has a similar um, dichotomy there where we have a physical structure and then we have the software or informational energetic um, uh, output of that physical structure that we call the mind. And so um, this is kind of a map that helps us to kind of see, to, to navigate. Now a shadow is a, like we said earlier, is a domain of unassimilated energy and information. It organizes into complexes, in other words, systems or programs, um, and some of which are highly parasitic. And it's a domain of psychic parasitism. Now, the shadow is not just consisting of parasitic complexes, autonomous complexes. It is, um, comes out, it leaks out into our attitudes, into our moods, into our perceptions and beliefs. It's not all active, viral, and parasitic. But if we don't understand that we all have created some kind of a, um, we all have some kind of an ecosystem in us of active parasitic processes, um, then I think then we're, 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 we're really going to have to because you have to when you start to get into this work. Now, um, one individual, there's a few individuals that are out there now that really, I think, understand this, is, um, is Eckhart Tolle. 
And he has a concept called the pain body. And so you could maybe read that, Melissa. The pain body is my term for the accumulation of old emotional pain that almost all people carry in their energy field. I see it as a semi-autonomous psychic entity. It consists of negative emotions that were not faced, accepted, and then let go in the moment they arose. These negative emotions leave a residue of emotional pain which is stored in the cells of the body. Body. There is also a collective human pain body containing the pain suffered by countless human beings throughout history. The pain body has a dormant stage and an active stage. Period periodically, it also becomes activated, and when it does, it seeks more suffering to feed on. Oh, I might replace some of those words myself with a little bit more scientific words, but if you take that quote and you compare that when you're doing your own shadow work, I think most people will find that this is highly accurate. And if you read um, Eckhart Tolle's understanding of the pain body in this book, The Power of Now, but also in the second book, uh, A New Earth, I think it's called, there's two chapters on, on the pain body, um, it's dead on. And I, I would, and, and because he describes it in such a, um, um, a simple, simple, yeah, yeah. lay person's uh, understanding, um, it's so helpful because we're really going into this really kind of scientifically. And he's so, he just says it so well. So we really recommend that. Now, um, let's just move on. And what is, and Paul Levy is another scholar who is, is really looking at the parasitic aspect viral aspect of shadow material the virus of the mind is a virulent psychic pathogen that insinuates thought forms and beliefs into our mind which when unconsciously enacted feed it and ultimately kill its host us yeah and remember when when young said that those those um those revolutions were psychic epidemics and um, and so we're going to move quickly here, but but uh, this is a this is a big part of our work and something that we're going to be going into much more deeply in the four week class. So the last thing on this probably is is this quote here. Just as we could not have imagined the biological realm of viruses two hundred years ago. Today, most of us would not believe that our minds could harbor viruses. Most would not believe that our culture is a transmission medium for these entities which travel through media, through our language, our behavior, our energetic states, and probably our DNA as well. The devil of this world might be more properly described as a virus. Um, absolutely. Um, now, let me just... Um uh, do something there. Now, <sighs> the more you look at this domain, the more you look at this, um, at the way shadow material um, operates and the way it moves through yourself and through your relationships, especially if you have an intimate relationship and there is a destructive cycle, which is a reoccurring destructive cycle. And most relationships probably have different reoccurring destructive cycles. And you can look back at those destructive cycles and see them um, in your prior relationships. You can see them in your parents' relationships. You can see them in your um, in your cultural heritage, you can see them playing, you see them playing out in mass scales um, in cultural conflicts like um, Israel-Palestine or China and Tibet or um, um, uh, Iran-Iraq and Sunni Shiite. These are the basically these are the polar field or feeding cycle, you could say, of the pain body, of right. the personal and collective pain body. And so we call this um, the victim-victor cycle. Right. Did you want to say something about that? Um, so we're constantly, uh, 
you know, we ask ourselves, why is it that I get into the same relationships that have the same issues over and over mm-hmm. and over again? Why do I get into these same fights with, with my partner? Why is it that these, these countries keep fighting with each other? You know, and this same issues, it, it's a cyclical um, energy system where one person plays the active and then the other person plays the passive role. And mm-hmm. this can flip. It doesn't necessarily have to be that the, the female plays a passive role. That's wrong. No, the female can also play the active role. Yeah, sure. Um, in the active uh, feminine, that would be the Kali and the yeah, yeah. passive feminine. That would be, uh, as Marion Woodman would call the death mother. Yeah. 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 So, it doesn't have to be masculine, feminine. We can both play both parts to this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we can flip. And so you, um, one person might be playing the, the victim role and the other person might be the aggressor attacking them. And then at some point that person says, I'm fed up with your victimizing me and they flip and then they victimize the other person and then they feel victimized. And then they can either use that as an opportunity to heal or they can flip it back over again. And so, uh, um, and I think we have enough time here because we, we went over a little bit. Can I just say one but, yeah. thing? Mm-hmm. So these are actually organic energy systems mm-hmm. that resonate with each other. Yes. And it is a live energetic informational energy this is alive and that's something very it's hard for our minds to get behind that but it's yeah. very important yeah the the pain body um which is an ecosystem of active shadow material in the human being which collectivizes out into the society um can be seen through a biological lens like that and you can see it as um, viral and parasitic, and it does um, it does it does work in that way. Very very true. You can also see it through the lens of of, of energy and polarity, um, energy dynamics, um, because all biological entities are also energetic, um, 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 electromagnetic entities. Um, you can see how these shadow energies attract and repel each other. There are a number of different lenses that you can use to look at this. Today, we've been looking at the biological relationship profile of parasitism and to see how that works. And we really didn't get into all the details of that, which we will in the class. But the one thing on the screen there that says wounds which give rise, and this is where these um, where these destructive complexes originate, whether they're in your own childhood wounding or your parents because they are passed genetically. And they can, they are, they're transmitted all throughout culture, through our parenting styles, through the way that we create culture itself. Patriarchal civilization itself is inherently wounding to people. And so we are all basically nursery, nursing psychic wounds and these are places that give rise to shadow complexes. Exactly. Um, and this is what we do when we do shadow work is right. we're actually getting into the actual wound mm-hmm. which creates these dynamics, creates these destructive cycles. Absolutely. Um, so doing shadow work. Um, so there's a kind of a long uh, list there. And um, I'm just going to mute a couple people right now. And um, so you could go through those maybe. So these are some of the things that we're going to be talking about and doing in the the four-week class. So um, inventory of state. So we're constantly uh, doing mindfulness practices of being aware of our state, Mm -hmm. our emotional state, our Mm -hmm. psychic state Mm -hmm. at all times. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also start to really dig into our past and inventory of our past uh, wounding, and also, it also unfolds your personal mythology, it does. Your, your own personal myth, your own personal life art, which is actually um, your, your ultimate 
life mm -hmm. is your highest potential. Your highest your alchemical potential gold is your own personal mythology. And so we're going to be going a lot into that. And this is really important is we're tracing our, our charges, what we are charged negatively about right. and using the charges mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to as an access point to go into our psyche right and then start watching our destructive cycles yeah tracking tracing them and using them as a doorway into the original discordance into the original wound right which is what this emotional processing method is right now and, yeah. and i wanted to say something about this is is that if you take this class with us um, which um, is very affordable anyway, I would say that if you only got this method out of it, I mean, you'll get a lot out of this. There'll be a whole way of looking at darkness in yourself and in the world. But this method, which is a compilation method from John Ruskin and from Michael Brown and Eckhart Tolle, and it's, it's, it's applied in a specific way. This emotional processing method where you take an emotional trigger and use it as a doorway into the original discordance and allow that material to come out and to integrate into your consciousness um, is the most important type of shadow work that we've been doing and by far um, is just, I mean, I can't, I can't imagine not having been doing that work for the last few years it's, it's really so amazing. important and so effective it really does yes. free up your own um your own energy yeah because remember when Eckhart Tolle said that the pain body is formed when emotional content arises but which is not let go of in the moment right. it arose in other words when you're a child and right. something traumatic happens and then the parent cannot facilitate the proper movement and um, um, and rebalancing of that energy well we're all holding on to that it stuff stores and so yeah. we've got to process some of this rage some of this grief some of this guilt some of this old fear that's still sitting there and a lot of it feels like it's in your gut your gut is like another brain right and uh, we've got to move this material up and out and physically um, move it through our physiology and retrain these physiological circuits. So right. that's this emotional processing method. Shadow hole on jumping is basically just looking at the destructive force in the universe in many different domains or hole ons and putting together a map. Uh, to help understand this in hermetic teachings it's uh as a, oh yeah as it, above so below right? as above yeah. so below absolutely and we call it whole on jumping whole on yeah whole on jumping and as above so below are the right. same thing uh relationship is a shadow mirror right so obviously your relationships are a mirror an exact mirror of what is going on inside of your own internal state yeah if you want to take responsibility for that right and that's the number one thing about shadow work is being completely transparent yes with yourself yes in your relationships yes. and in your world right and when you do that you more and more see this relationship between your internal state and your external world absolutely um dream work is big in Jungian circles it's very important uh, journaling is can be a part of dream work or it can be on its own um, not everybody will be into that but uh, it's important we do a lot of talking into audio tapes uh, you know into recorders and then the last thing on the list there is living in the movie which is really uh, what of, I just said yeah, actually yeah, really, it's it it's a way of living life um, where you notice how your internal world is also co-creating your external world and you really start to notice synchronicities and it is a real fun way to live and this is how we live our life <laughs> and yeah there's a that's a, that's a chapter of the book of, of the actually of the printed book and it's it's on our websites and stuff i think we're just getting close to the end here so we're kind of going a little bit quickly here but so here's a rough outline of the series um, the first class will be just a, a, a deeper exploration of the shadow through a number of different uh, established lenses that i think are all already out there um, 
um, more about Young's words, um, Robert L. Moore's fourfold model of the psyche and the polar shadow archetypes which appear in the psyche, which I think is so useful. We use that like every day. Um, the shadow in an alchemical perspective, we talked a little bit about today, in shamanism as an initiation. Um, Eckhart Tolle, uh, Paul Levy, a number of other authors, um, and a cellular model of the psyche that we didn't share today, which at least for me is a very helpful way of, of seeing shadow material. The second class um, will be um, our, whole, our whole layout, really. And these are all the names of, of chapters in our book, and we'll go into each of these different concepts because they all kind of stack together to make this map, this, this, this topology. Um, the third class will be about what we just really talked about, about doing actual shadow work in life and this emotional processing method that we talked about there. Um, and like I said, very, very important, I think. And then the fourth class we're going to leave to be more conversational amongst all of us. And we welcome you all to bring your own personal um, conflicts that are that you're, or, or personal addictions or destructive cycles uh, that you're experiencing into the workshop. And we will see, we will look at them through this lens or maybe those of your clients and we'll look at them through this lens and we'll really make sure that the, by the time this class ends, you really can see how to apply this uh, in your own life. We're also starting a Facebook shadow tech group yeah. um, where you can interact with other people who are doing shadow work and it'll be an ongoing community that will be being built of yes. people who understand um, this process and yes. are doing it. It's very important to have a good support system when you're doing this work. We did start, um, we and still currently keep a, um, a, a private or, or secret Facebook group for another workshop that we did. And it was, it's been very helpful to everyone that's involved. This next one will be a little more public, but yes, it's been, it's been very effective. And um, so here's some links. So I think we're at the end here and then we'll stop and we'll, we'll carry on for as long as you guys like, or, or, or for a little while. Anyone who has questions, you can start. Um, you can put them in the chat window now, right? right. Or, um, or just wait until the recording's over and we will, um, and we'll, we'll talk to you personally. So here's some links to take down. One is you can go get the book for free from shadowtechbook.com. Um, you can find our Facebook page at facebook.com slash living in the movie of life. The four week class begins February 11th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. The price varies for when you sign up and all of this, but it's averages around $149 for individuals or $169 for couples, which, which is, is really awesome. amazing. If you can have a, if you have a partner who wants to do this yeah. work with you, uh, it accelerates the process. Oh, if amazing. You can, yeah. If you can do this work with your intimate partner, you're in luck. But if, if you can't, it's okay because you will learn your own cycles and and your own destructive areas. Yeah. You can work through them so that you can actually attract the partner. Of A more mature partner. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, everything you need to know about registering for the class is, is through DepthPsychologyAlliance.com, but I've also made it very simple for you. It's at my website, which is ColinEDavis.com slash events. It's also pinned to the top of our Facebook page, and you can get to Melissa, Melissa's page through um, MelissaMariAlchemy.com. Dot com. Yeah, and feel free to send us any messages. Absolutely. Or questions. So, okay. So, let me stop the, um, the share screen there. And um, thank you all for joining us today.